So now that we've established how fungi reproduce in the past two videos and flowcharts, we're going to be going now into the details in terms of the types of fungi that we see in the actual environment and in the ecosystems that we observe in planet Earth. So to begin, we're entitled this first flowchart on the types of fungi as that exactly. Types of fungi, Roman numeral one. And just to remind you, there are five total types of fungi to remember. We're going to be covering four of them. The fifth will be covered in the second part to this types of fungi flowchart series. Now, the first one to remember is known as the chytrids. So we'll write number one, and right next to it we'll put the chytrids. Chytrid fungi are found in various habitats. That's what I would consider their defining characteristic. The fact that they are found in, I forgot the word, in various habitats. A good example of this would be the fact that they're found in uh, terrestrial habitats. Terrestrial just refers to land, so they're usually found either on land, they could also be found in a marine habitat, ocean environment essentially, or even a freshwater habitat. That would uh, be something that's like a lake, so a freshwater habitat. So as we can see from this, we definitely have a variety in terms of where you would find chytrids. Another thing about chytrids to remember is that they have flagellated spores. So um, before we mention the fact that most fungi, uh, at least a lot of the fungi, have spores that are non-motile, that cannot move on their own, these guys, chytrids, since they live in marine and freshwater environments specifically, they actually do have the ability for their spores at least to be able to move. These flagella move through the water and we actually call these flagellated spores something different. We actually give them a name called zoospores. These are zoospores and they are characteristic of the chytrids. Um, look at figure 31.11 to get a good understanding of these zoospores. 31.11 is the figure to look at to truly see the flagellated spores of these chytrid fungi. Finally, last point about chytrids, these guys, uh, they diverged early. They diverged early in the fungi evolution. So they're very old fungi, and that's why we went over them first, essentially. Uh, very old fungi, so they diverged early. Probably one of the first fungi to come out of that nuclearid protist divergence towards fungi, towards land, towards the colonization of land, and thus we see them as both marine, freshwater, and then even terrestrial. So it makes sense in terms of our protist history and the relationship between protists and fungi, how chytrids are kind of like protists in the sense that a lot of them are found in water, they have these flagellated spores, etc. So that's our chytrids. The second type of fungi to understand we'll do down over here. Number two out of five would be the zygomycetes. Zygomycetes. Now whenever you see this uh, root of mycete, uh, you always think fungi. And then the type of fungi here is going to be a zygo. This is mainly going to refer to the fungi that are mostly decomposers. They are mostly decomposers. And because they're decomposers, they're usually found in the soil. And so we remember decomposers are a type of fungi. And the specific type of decomposer to remember are zygomycetes. Uh, they're found in the soil, and because they're decomposers, they, of course, because of this, feed on decayed matter. Feed on decayed matter. Things that are dead already, they absorb, uh, they release their hydrolytic enzymes and absorb nutrients off of the decayed matter that's within the soil. This is why we don't have dead things just all over planet Earth. Think about it. We have all of these animals and organisms that live on planet Earth that all die every single day, every single second. Why aren't they just piling up on top of each other? There are a huge group of fungi and bacteria all dedicated to decomposing, to breaking down and eating this decaying matter. So it's a very important part of our ecosystem and our ecology as a whole on planet Earth. In addition, to remember about the zygomycetes uh, is an example. The example to remember is called Rhizopus stoloriter. So let's write this down as our genus is Rhizopus and our species is stoloriter. What is important about this guy? This is actually black bread mold. Something a lot of people see if bread gets moldy. 
this is the fungi in charge of that. This is the fungi that causes this. Um, zygomycetes, uh, black bread mold, is a rhizobus stoloriter. So just remember that name. The third type of fungi that we're going to be covering, we'll do right over here. This one is called the glomeromycetes. So again, what root do we see here? This root to represent fungi would be the mycete root. Glomero is now the specific type of fungi we're focusing on. One thing to remember about this is that these uh, are arbuscular, arbuscular mycorrhizae, something we covered in a previous video on the mycorrhizal fungi characterization. What is arbuscular mycorrhizae? These are, if you remember, those mycorrhizae that go through things. Um, we can write this down as the mycorrhizae that go through the cell walls. Remember how there was one that goes in between the cells and there's one that goes more invasively uh, through the cells and this is through the cell walls. Um, it goes and forms these tubes-like scenarios and then also eventually ends up within the cell membrane. So remember those uh, key facts, the fact that they go through not cell calls, but cell walls here, W. This is for cell walls. Let me rewrite that actually. Through cell walls, and then through the tubes, and then into the cell membrane in order to this do the absorption, in order to give them the nutrients that they can get from the soil, and in order for them to get the nutrients that the plants can make for them, the organic nutrients. Remember, mycorrhizae, mutualistic relationship. If you need to remember, go back to the mycorrhizae video and understand the idea of arbuscular, specifically the mutualistic relationship associated with mycorrhizal fungi. This is a specific example I would remember, the glomeromycetes. Fourth and final one in this video um, is the, or are the basidomycetes. Again, to reiterate, we always look at etymology, the history of the word, the root of the word, the meaning of the word. There it is, mycetes. That's definitely going to be referring to fungi, the specific type, or the basido class. And um, there are tons of examples of these. These are very, very common and very, very classic fungi that you see. Um, the type, the ter couple of examples to remember, um, the bracket fungi. Uh, are a type of basidomycete. Uh, puffballs are also a type of specific basidomycete fungi. Um, wheat rust is also one, and wheat rust is usually always in association with, we'll put a plus here, with another fungi called corn smut. Very nice, funny names for the basidomycetes. And also, last one, uh, I think this one's uh, really important because it's something that we're used to. It's Ar Agaricus by, I want to make sure I spell this right, Sporus. So by Sporus, that kind of tells you what it uses for its sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction, whatever it may be. Um, these are edible mushrooms. These are edible mushrooms. These are the mushrooms that we use in cooking, um, and they are, of course, fungi. And the type of fungi that they are specifically are basidomycetes. So we have chytrids, zygomycetes, glomeromycetes, and basidomycetes. These are the four out of the five major types of fungi. Know the details associated with each of them. Be able to classify each of these. You get a classic example question where, you know, Dr. Smith is looking at a fungi cell. He notices the following, that it has these this ability to go through cell walls. Be able to recognize that that's probably the glomeromycete, an arbuscular mycorrhizae. Um, that covers our first four. We'll do the last one in the next uh, types of fungi video.